Amongst many different fan communities online, there are many different pushes to search and uncover lost media that has been missing for years and years. It's always interesting whenever lost media finally does become found after years of fans thinking something's gone forever and then something actually gets found. But one thing that Luke and I have noticed over the years is that Halo not only doesn't quite have a massive community searching for items that may be lost and not archived online, but even websites like the Lost Media Wiki, which focuses on cataloging potentially lost forms of media along with starting as a hub for people to even begin the search, doesn't really have that much coverage on Halo whatsoever. And there is a lot of media from the Halo franchise that to an extent is lost. But if no one's even looking for it in the first place, the likelihood of something surfacing again or being uncovered or saved from being lost forever becomes a whole lot slimmer. So we wanted to take a look at the lost media of Halo history. Okay, so these things range from very simple to extremely complex. So we'll start off with a couple of the more simple lost forms of media and just get more and more deep as we go through this. Let's start off with the Dervish files. Now this starts off with a lot of very common Halo knowledge. In Halo 2, the character, the Arbiter, was originally referred to as the Dervish. Through 97% of the game's development, according to Jamie Griesemer, the Arbiter was referred to as the Dervish, but it wasn't until a last minute legal call from Microsoft's geopolitical experts that wanted to avoid controversy as the name Dervish comes from a role within the religion of Islam. Microsoft encouraged Bungie to change the character's name and Bungie obliged. Now there's documentation in this Vice article that has quotes from various developers who worked on Halo 2, specifically this line from Marty O'Donnell who said that they had to go and cut every single instance of a character saying the name Dervish and then try to match it with the character saying Arbiter instead. He even goes on to say that he thinks that some of the manuals were even printed with the name Dervish in them, which we actually talked about in a video not too long ago, and we encouraged our audience to take a look at their Halo 2 manuals just to see if anyone happened to have a Dervish manual laying around, and nobody actually had one. So now we're faced with two possible forms of completely lost media here. Firstly, it's very likely that the manuals were pulled by Microsoft, though they could exist out there somewhere. Some could have either slipped by into retail copies, or maybe not all of the manuals with the incorrect name in them were destroyed. And then secondly, the audio files originally with the recordings of the actors referring to the character as Dervish are also essentially lost media. Now, there was more audio that was cut from Halo 2, like the ending that would have taken place on Earth's Ark, and recently some really cool storyboard art has surfaced online, and we have an idea of what Halo Halo 2's ending would have been, but there was also audio files that were cut from that ending that did show up in a Halo Reach DLC build randomly years ago, but it shows that there are cut audio files that did exist as of at least years ago out there, so maybe it's possible the Dervish files can be recovered. The next one's another really obvious one, but still a really interesting one for Halo fans, but the E3 2003 tech demo. It was shown off by Joseph Staten, and this entire game play section and the part of the game ended up getting cut from the final release of the game and to this day it's something that a lot of fans have wanted to experience for years. Now it was kind of considered completely lost media for a while but we do know for a fact that 343 Industries does have a developer Xbox with that tech build on it and they did do a special live stream back in 2017 where they showed off the demo itself and showed that you could walk around and explore the sandbox a little bit more. Fans have begged and asked for a release maybe as an MCC little fun thing to try out, which probably will never happen. And the chances of us ever seeing the E3 build see a full release or leak is very unlikely where just anyone is able to jump on and try it out, but one can still hope. If you were on the internet during the mid 2000s into the late 2000s, you may have remembered talks, very limited talks, but still talks about a Halo 
game known as Halo Chronicles, which was a video game that was supposed to exist in the Halo universe in development for the Xbox 360, which would have had episodic, interactive storytelling and was going to be developed by a studio known as Wingnut Interactive. Development actually started back in 2006. It was going to be a partnership with Microsoft and Peter Jackson, and Wingnut Interactive never actually made any games either. They were just known for working on Peter Jackson's projects. Allegedly, there was supposed to be limited interactions with branching choices and different endings, and all we know is that it was announced in September of 2006 at Microsoft's X06 convention. Actually, that same Vice article we talked about earlier even pointed out that Joseph Staten and designer Mike Wu were in New Zealand working with Jackson on a part of the Chronicles story. Paul Russell even talked a little bit about the project on Twitter as well, saying that the story would have had a human miner who is a slave of a covenant. He then becomes the first forerunner Spartan, and he leads a rebellion, and he forms himself into a javelin where he Captain Marvels himself through covenant ships like their butter. I don't know what this is, but it sounds kind of awesome and weird. There was some concept art for some ships, and it was being considered that it would be released once a month in a more episodic type serial. Gameplay designer Paul Bertone even went on to elaborate on more about this game, stating that Joe, Joseph Staten, came up with the concept of being the bullet, and they wanted the player to have this emotional and gameplay journey from just being a human to being a modified human. Not modified in the sense you just put on armor, but there's biological shit actually happening to you. And essentially, we see the very first introduction, essentially, of what would become the Forerunner Prometheans with this old bungee concept art that eventually did surface from this project. Now, the whole project was confirmed cancelled by 2009, and we don't know what extent the development went into, but a three-year development cycle and all of the serious talks between Bungie and this Wingnut Interactive and Microsoft seems like there was a lot of stuff put into this project, and we really don't know the full extent of everything that ended up getting cut that still may be out there somewhere on some hard drive maybe, but it is really interesting for the little bit we do know about it. Even after the deal with Peter Jackson fell through, Microsoft reaffirmed that they were not canceling the project and continued to hire for the job of developing this game for at least a couple of months later before finally stating that they decided to put the effort just on hold to prioritize resources on other upcoming games like ODST, Reach, and that animated series Halo Legends. Next, we want to talk about the Hurricane Ivan incident. Now, a lot of you guys may remember I Love Bees. It's one of our personal favorite pieces of Halo media. We've done a very extensive video breaking down everything that happened in that along with the story behind it. But essentially at one part in the ARG, fans would be given coordinates to go to various payphone locations across the United States. And at a certain time, the phone would ring and players would pick up the phone and be given instructions by the quote unquote operator. Now during this ARG, while payphones were ringing in hundreds of locations on a pretty regular basis, there was one that was ringing in a specific location that had Hurricane Ivan just going on and some fan went through the trouble of being outside by a payphone and was trying to get the operator to communicate about this Halo 2 ARG and allegedly as the legend goes and this legend does span a lot of different sources and has been talked about for years the operator broke character saying dude it's a hurricane put the phone down now there are limited recordings of the phone calls and and conversations that were a part of this ARG, but to this day, there hasn't ever been an official audio recording of this specific phone call that's ever surfaced. It might be out there somewhere, but for now, it is technically still classified as lost media. Okay, let's talk about the PlayStation 2 for a second. Earlier in this video, we talked about how there's not a lot of coverage on the lost media wiki for Halo, but there is a lot of discussion about an alleged PlayStation 2 build of Halo, and we're pretty sure it's fake. But let's go ahead and back up and look at Halo history and see where this is all coming from. After Microsoft was acquired by Bungie, Halo Combat Evolved was a huge success for Xbox as a brand and it put them on the map. But 
The acquisition didn't happen until halfway through Halo Combat Evolved's development, and the game was at first revealed at Macworld, making it look like it was going to be a game for Macintosh computers, much like the Marathon games beforehand. We do know that Bungie had a publishing deal set up with Rockstar Games, which Microsoft ended up buying Bungie out of that deal. And because of this link, a lot of people speculate that it would make sense that in the earlier stages of development, Bungie was possibly preparing for a PlayStation release to have the game on as many consoles as possible. But the real rumors started coming from a PlayStation 2 build that may have been a very early version of the build with alleged footage being uploaded onto IGN's YouTube channel with an interview from Bungie developers Doug Zartman and Marcus Leto, which they had done years ago with a German gaming magazine. And in this five minute or so interview, there's footage mixed of this supposed PlayStation 2 build, which pretty much just looks like the early videos we've seen of Halo before they were even bought of Microsoft. Honestly, the video looks pretty fake, and it's kind of a big red flag here since anyone could have just mixed in some early pre-alpha footage that's been around for forever and just say, hey, look, it's the PlayStation 2 version, it's different. But what really doesn't help the case is the fact that the interview also doesn't have any sound, and the only connection to the PlayStation 2 is the title picked by IGN, Halo Combat Evolved PlayStation 2 Gameplay. Not even the original gaming magazine that did the interview claimed that PlayStation 2 was supposed to have anything to do with it, and if we want to take it a step further, Bungie even literally said in one of their blog posts that they never had Halo running on a PlayStation 2 anyways, so it could have just been maybe a proposed plan or something to think about, but not something that actually exists or is a form of lost media like we see pop up on the lost media wiki. Even the IGN video is kind of old, and it's very possible that just whoever was in charge of uploading content onto IGN back then just had fun with it and no one really looked to double check and see if there's some legitimacy to anything going on here. But they've also done some other weird things in the past too with a PS2 version of Halo. Essentially a long time ago they did a listing for Halo Combat Evolved on PS2 through their GameSpy website early on. We don't know why this is like a recurring thing with IGN. Now this is another one we've already covered on our channel in the past, but it's still worth mentioning here, but Halo for the Nintendo DS. Now this is interesting because there was a lot of rumors around it way back when video footage first surfaced, but essentially going from one IGN based rumor to another one, Halo DS was, as far as we know, an unsolicited demo for Halo on the Nintendo DS that was shown off in a video by IGN in 2011, but this rumor tracks back even before that, where IGN's Matt Casamassina claimed that the game was completely up, running, and fully playable, but then that same year, Bungie employees denied the existence of any Halo DS game. So years later, when the video surfaced showing what looked like Halo on the DS playing, it was a little bit confusing. But the game itself was actually a mod for a different game, GoldenEye Rogue Agent, to show off a concept of what a Halo game on the DS would look like, but it wasn't anything that was ever officially requested by Bungie or Microsoft. And we don't actually have too much information as to who made this very simplistic prototype build of Halo on the DS based on GoldenEye Rogue Agent. There's a lot of suspicion that it could have been Endspace trying to pitch the idea of a Halo game since they developed Rogue Agent and it's likely that they were the ones utilizing their own game to pitch what Halo would look like. But as far as what we can tell, the Halo DS pitch wasn't anything officially requested by Bungie or Halo in any official capacity. But as you can see, the gameplay looks somewhat familiar and it has Zanzibar. Now the interesting thing is, of course, this demo was never released and it just exists maybe somewhere at the hands of IGN. We don't even know to this day if it is still in a safe location or who actually has this one prototype that's possibly out there and how they even got their hands on it. The demo was never ripped online or released to any capacity, which is surprising. So while for a little while it looked like this thing had surfaced, it kind of fell back into obscurity. And unless something else comes up, it's essentially lost media once again. Halo reaches lockout. Okay, this one's a little bit different than most of the ones that we've talked about in this video so far. But if you remember back to when Halo Reach released, they introduced Forge World, which was this huge map where you could build your own maps in it, and that was a really cool feature. And they also showed off that a lot of classic Halo maps 
could be remade in Halo Reach, and that some of them would be remade and released as if they were main maps. We saw Halo Reach release with Forge World, but also a handful of other maps that were remade from Halo's past built into the game like Asylum or Sanctuary. These weren't maps that you could delete, they were a part of Halo and they were in the multiplayer rotation. However, during Forge World's Vidoc, where they showed off what could be made in Forge World, while we see these maps show up, there's an extra map that didn't make it into the final release of the game, Lockout. Now, from this video, it's very clear that the Lockout map was at least close to being finished and it looks like a standard one-to-one -one recreation of the map from Halo 2 and maybe Blackout from Halo 3 if you count that. And while fans expected it to be baked into the game the same way the other maps were, it never actually ended up surfacing. Matter of fact, this map that's been created by some Bungie developers who were working on Forge wasn't ever found even in an unofficial release, as in user uploaded content. Now other people have gone on and recreated Lockout in Halo Reach multiple times back in the day using Forge World tools, but this original version that was shown off in the trailer never did actually surface, so it is kind of a unique type of lost media. There has been efforts to find this map back in the day, and to our knowledge, no one's actually been able to find it. The promo disc with unused Halo commercials. This one's one that we find really interesting because it was a request to the Halo community to try to find something that potentially exists. This was posted onto the Halo subreddit by user R. Hutchins, who's working on a marketing archive of the classic Halo Combat Evolved materials, and while doing research, stumbled upon discussions about a interesting commercial that featured a politician talking about how he was going to open a can of whoop ass on some aliens. We'll open a giant can of whoop ass. And this led him to a rabbit hole of finding this commercial re-uploaded onto YouTube, figuring out that this commercial itself aired likely in Canada, as a lot of people who posted discussing this commercial all the way back in the early 2000s were mostly located in Canada when they talked about seeing the commercial on TV. But here's where the mystery really opens up. The uploader of that specific commercial posted in the description of the video that there's more unused Halo commercials on a disc, but these commercials have allegedly never seen the light of day. This has led to a lot of the fan base looking into this and speculating that whoever uploaded this video, username Team XBL720, likely received a special promotional disc at some sort of event that was to build hype for the Xbox. And that said promo disc had a bunch of commercials and promotions for games some that would end up being used, and others that wouldn't. So now the question remains, what else is on this disc, and what is the mysterious video that hadn't been used that the uploader just randomly alludes to in the commercial upload video that apparently no one's ever seen before? The uploader has pretty much gone dormant from their channel, and any duplicates of this disc have never been found, and there's a little bit more to this rabbit hole that the OP goes into on the Reddit thread. It's definitely worth taking a read but there's serious reason to believe that there is in fact more commercials on some mysterious promo disc that is just lost out there. Another really interesting thing since we're on the topic of old YouTube channels that go dormant, when we were doing research for this topic, we did notice that there are a ton of people looking for old Halo machinimas from the Halo 2 and Halo 3 era that aren't on YouTube anymore. And it's interesting because a lot of older uploads ended up getting removed because of copyrighted music or other types of things. And there is a community of fans out there that are looking for some old classic Halo machinimas that just aren't available on YouTube. Apparently there's a Soldier Boy disc track, another one called Master Chief Vengeance. And there's people out there looking for these and never found them. And there's probably a lot of other machinimas that also essentially are just lost to time getting removed from the platform for one reason or another. The Marcus Leto RTS build of Halo. If you guys remember all the way back, or at least seeing videos of all the way back to when Halo was first revealed, you guys would understand and remember that Halo originally started out as a project that was going to be an RTS. There's a lot of very limited footage that's out there, and fans had archived what had been released way early on years ago. 
However, former Bungie developer Marcus Leto released footage from a working build of the original RTS version of Halo. It's absolutely wild that all of these years later, those files are just still in Marcus Leto's possession, but sure enough, we got to see an in-depth and amazing reveal of a really old build of Halo. Now we're gonna classify this one, we think as found, rediscovered, resurfaced, but also partially lost because it's very likely Marcus Leto will never release it publicly. But still, the fact that to an extent there is a version out there and Marcus Leto went and archived more content for the Halo community by showing some of these earliest versions of what Halo came from is something that's really cool. Okay, another one we've talked about before, but we'll go over it again just because I think it's super fascinating, but Destiny's Halo Reach build. This is the one that I probably want to have found more than any other form of lost media that exists out there. Now we've done two videos that have actually touched on this topic. We did a video specifically talking about the Halo Reach Destiny prototype and also an in-depth history of Destiny that goes way in depth. But during the end of development for Halo 3, the Bungie team split up into three separate teams. One team would begin working on upgrading the Halo 3 engine briefly and working on Halo 3 ODST. The second team would take their own build of Halo 3's engine and upgrade it with a little bit more time for what would be Halo Reach's engine. And the third team took their own version of the Halo 3 engine and put years of time into developing what would become Destiny 1's engine. However, that last engine was taking more time after Halo Reach released and wasn't ready for development to begin on the engine just yet. So instead, the developers who had just finished launching Reach started prototyping ideas in the Halo Reach engine. Knowing that all of that work would get scrapped and they would start over building their ideas into the newest engine that was built just for Destiny. There's been very limited footage from what we speculate is that Halo Reach engine, but if a developer kit ever releases one day online that has the build of Destiny in Halo Reach, that would be incredible just to see what ideas were played with, what concepts came straight from Halo, and just other interesting things. The whole video goes into depth about what potentially is in this build, and it's really awesome. Lost Halo websites. Okay, this one's a little different, but still really interesting. And this is one that I reached out directly to Chris from Halopedia and he brought up as a good talking point because it is really cool. But over the years with every Halo release, usually a website gets built to promote the game in one way or another. That was kind of the norm, especially back in the mid to late 2000s. However, some of these websites are no longer accessible, meaning anything that was on the website is more or less gone unless someone somewhere managed to archive everything that was on the website. Now, the biggest case of this is the original Halo 2 website, which is no longer accessible in any form, and it doesn't appear that there's an archive of the Halo 2 website anywhere. There are a couple of screenshots that have survived over the years, so we can get an idea of what the Halo 2 website looked like, and honestly, it kind of looks a lot like the user interface from Halo 2, which was this nice deep blue, and it was really cool. So having a website that matched that aesthetic would have been really awesome to take a look at. Unfortunately, it appears though, as for now, unless someone has an archive that hasn't shared it yet, Halo 2's website is gone forever. Now there are some versions of Halo media and websites that are accessible through the Wayback Machine, however this bluish one is kind of still lost to time, and it'd be really cool to get to take a look at it one last time. Halo Wars is another game website that would see a similar fate to Halo 2 with the website being removed, however this time around it was archived through Halopedia. So all of the important lore, and there was a lot of lore set up on the Halo Wars website, was fortunately saved. However, there were audio recordings from the voice actors themselves who played the characters that are lost to time and some of the cool animations built into the website are no longer accessible. This one's just really interesting. Apparently, lore-wise, a Spartan even dies through this website's canon and it's just crazy that this is something that is only partially archived thanks to the people at Halopedia and we don't have a full way to experience the original website the way that it was all the way back in the day.
So at the end of the day, we really hope that eventually some of these things will end up surfacing and we will have more closure as to what is real, what is out there still, and what we don't even know is missing. I have a feeling that hopefully this video will also encourage other people who know about things that are possibly lost from the Halo community and share them online so Halo fans can actually start looking for them. Maybe that would be a great video for us to follow up on in the future. Who knows? Maybe subscribe with notifications on so we can keep you guys updated on any of these things in the future. So then you know when we make a video, it's there. I don't know how to plug that. Okay, we'll see you guys all later with a brand new video.